All right, let's do this again. Welcome to a leveling guide. My name is MDog here on the YouTube channel as well as Twitch. You can find me at uh, MDog Gaming on Twitch and uh, also MDog Gaming channel here on YouTube, which you've likely found if you're watching this video. And uh, I frequently every, um, I don't know, several months, we'll do a fresh leveling leveling guide to Russian Fishing 4. I'm uh, going to do this a little bit different this time. Um, if, you, if you want more tips and tricks on the first few levels of RF4, I would recommend you go back about four months uh, ago. I created a series that we made it a long, long time, up into the episode 20s, I believe. And um, if you type in leveling together, Rush, uh, RF4 leveling together, you'll find that series. Or you can see it in the videos in my, on my YouTube channel. Um, the first thing we have to do here is get into our chat channel. Join our friends who are already there. Um, what I'm going to try to do a little bit different in this uh, series, though, is instead of just talking about leveling um, from a general sense, we're going to try to focus on different types of fishing. Each episode, I'm going to try to focus on something a little bit different. Uh, because you're level locked in how, when you can do different types of fishing, some of the time it'll more be maybe focusing on trying to catch one particular fish or even one spot at Mosquito a lot early on. But while I'm talking, I will try to give some basic tips and tricks on how to play the game. But, but that was more my focus in the last series we did, which was, like I said, about four months ago. So right now we are going through the tutorial just as fast as I can. And um, try not to embarrass myself on how long it will take us to catch this first fish. I like that. Should be a sleeper, right, this time of day? Yep. All right, we're going to keep it. Put our rod away. And uh, turn the flashlight on. So I do recommend with the spare gear, if you go to the house here, you can get spare gear. I would say get uh, spare float tackle early on because it gives you those extra worms to use. But this is Russian Fishing 4. This is what it's like to be level one. And I guess my focus here in this first episode is going to be how to float fish as a level one player in RF4. Uh, my videos do tend to be a little chill. So, you know, I won't always be super focused. I'll lose my train of thought. And I may even just be... Uh, typing away with buddies. Um, if, if you want to join the chat channel where a lot of really cool people hang out, like I did when we first started, if you go to this wheel here and when you search for a channel, just type in MY space DAWGS. Uh, there's 169 players there uh, sitting in the channel, either active or offline right now, but it is a good place to hang out. All right, so now it is wanting us to go to Mosquito Lake and sell our first fish. And the nice thing now, of course, between Cottage Pond, Mosquito Lake, and uh, Winding Rivulet, we can now travel to all three places for free, bounce around, see where the best spots are. But we are going to do some float fishing here. Um, and that will be the main focus. I want to kind of look in the store first thing. Um, once we get through this tutorial and think about our strategy. Early on, the only, like I like to fish with, the, you know, as many rods as possible. With float fishing, I would say two is the sweet spot. But unfortunately, our second rod for now is going to be this, uh, this bamboo rod, which is just terrible. So I'm just going through the tutorial here. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. And it does just help you with the very, very basics. It's going to have, have us buy some maggots, I believe. Yeah. So we'll get uh, 30 maggots. We still have 47. Okay, now they want us to make some bread. 
We've got 47 silver, so we can... All right, now we go to Winding Rivulet to, to do uh, to do spin fishing. I think I will go ahead and do that because it will allow us to um, get through the tutorial stuff so I can stop being interrupted by all these noises. Um, just watching what everybody's saying in chat. Wrangler drank too much moonshine, losing health. We have been fishing that spot on bear for several hours off and on. Uh, I made a video about it earlier and it has just been tremendous. Every time I go there for a couple hours, I get more silver than the last. But I also wanted to start this series and we're gonna focus on float fishing in this first one, but I am gonna get through the tutorial first, which that has us going to winding and doing a short bit of spin fishing here. And then we'll have the training wheels off and can really start exploring mosquito a little bit i love mosquito lake and uh, winding rivulet is of course pretty decent as well by the way i'll go ahead and say if any of you are uh whether you're low level or not but if you're going through this process or if you're fishing at some of these early uh rivers and lakes if you find spots and you think it might be helpful for me to show those spots off in one of these videos by all means please let me know um Uh, it's always helpful to have suggestions. I haven't fished at Mosquito in quite a while, so this is going to be interesting. Um, all right, they've already got it set up the way we want it. 25, friction break 25. Hold R. We want to go down to 10, according to this. I always forget that F1 brings up all the shortcuts. I do like to program. Um, program some shortcuts. Uh, I guess I'll show those real quick. So for me, I have mouse button four. Put something back into the backspace uh, in the backpack, which is the same thing as backspace by default. Um, to put on a rod pod, I have mouse button three. Um, but also it's zero for me. I think that's what it is for everyone. Uh, but sometimes I'll use mouse button three for that. And I feel like there's other things too. Maybe not. If I think of other shortcuts and stuff, I sometimes use, I'll let you know. All right, so we need to, let's sell that perch. Just get it out of here. And let's go back to Mosquito. All right, so that was the tutorial. It really, it was just teaching you how to do a bit, the basics of spin fishing there. We'll get to spin fishing down the line. Um, I really do not enjoy spin fishing early on. Some people do, and, and my hats are off to them. Uh, they take a uh, very interesting road for those who pretty much just level by spin fishing right from the start. But um, we're going to do more float and feeder fishing, which is my sort of go-to in this game. Uh, we may do a little spin down the line, but we'll see. We've got rain at mosquitoes, so we're going to be uncomfortable, uh, but that's okay. All right, let's go look at the store. I wanted to do that first. I mentioned comfort. The comfort is the bottom of the four, uh, the four bars down here in the lower left part of the screen. You have your current energy, your uh, hunger meter, your health, which like Wrangler found, if you drink too much alcohol, you can lower that health. 
and then also your comfort level. If your comfort level is suboptimal, that means you're not going to gain energy back uh, as quickly or at all. So the best way to bring up your comfort is to drink things like mulled wine, but in uh, not too much at one time because you don't want to get too tipsy or drunk. Okay, so um, for 45, we can get, you have to be what, level three? We can get a com comma comfort telescopic, um, which load capacity is up to 5.5. And second float, a small 14, a little bit nicer hook um, and a sinker set. So one thing I was thinking about doing, and I don't normally do this, but I was thinking about, do we get a second float rod instead of first spending money on a feeder? Um, because then we could have two decent float rods going while we start to build up our feeder sets. Um, Ultimately, I just want, I will most likely, in, in many situations, I will most likely use two feeders and one float. I do want to do a lot of float fishing on this in this series, but in, in so many situations, just having one float rod out is enough, and then just having a couple feeders. So uh, what we have in our backpack right now is this middle Telestick 16. You see it goes up to load capacity of four kilos, which is uh, just over eight pounds. <clears throat> so that means that's how much load it can handle. Um, where this one goes up to 5.5 and um, could just handle a little larger fish, a little stronger line on there. So I am really thinking about that. The um, feeder fishing start is 149. So kind of my thoughts are if we get a second decent float rod, we could just save up for this, um, this feeder setup. I think it's wise for new players. I mean, it's not certainly not required, but these are these, especially the start ones. These are de decent, uh, decent ones. I, I heard at one point that they were going to also add a carp starting one, and I think that would be really cool. Um, so you have to be level twelve, but man, I would love to at level twelve save up and get a carp rod and show off like early level carp fishing I think that would be really cool I've never done that before in a leveling series so it's a steep price at that level to spend 716 on a rod but look at that load capacity 20 kilos at level 12 I mean that would that would just be a really different experience I mean I have uh, these Fortuna carp rods on my main account and that's pretty cool Another thing we could do on one episode is maybe talk about picker rods. Um, but we're not looking at that till level seven. So the cheapest picker rod, again, decent little load capacity. I do a lot of fishing for small fish, which is what picker rods tend to be good for. So these are just all thoughts I'm having, but I, I really kind of like that idea. Float fishing start, I mean, we can afford it right now. We're just not high enough level. Um, and it also wouldn't give us any silver for anything else. All right, the next thing I recommend you doing, even from level one, is getting familiar with the cafe. These are basically like orders for specific fish, and you're going to get twice as much, uh, or not exactly, but thereabouts. You're going to get often double the silver for filling these orders compared to just selling them at the fish market that you saw me do. So those are kind of things I suggest. All right, it's it's 8.42 in the morning. Right off this dock, oh my goodness, we don't have a map. We cannot do anything without a map. I just won't have it. Always get a map. It is just too good to have a map. At the bigger the body water body is, the more important it is. But even here, like I want to be able to look out here. So we're going to be fishing in 1.5 meter water or thereabouts. So we probably do want our depth to be around one meter. But let's try one two five and just see 
So what we're starting off with here is a size 16 hook and a worm. We've put it down to 1.25 depth and let's just cast it right here out in front of us. Man, I forget how bad these early. <laughs> okay. All right, let's just do that. Um, I suppose we can assemble this. I don't know. I hate to, but I guess we will. A little feather float. We don't have a leader yet. Smallest hook we got. Oh, it's just terrible though. Maybe we should put the 14 on the other one. Uh, let's just do bread. And uh, let's put this at one meter. And it's gonna hardly cast anywhere, but that's okay. Look, we're gonna almost always miss whatever fish is on that one. The goal is to try not to miss too many fish on this one. Although we will. If we ever get a fish off that one, it's just a bonus. So what I've started to do with float fishing, and we'll see how well it works at level one, but I've started to not have it in my hands. And the reason is because I often pull it up too fast. Even there, that was probably too fast. So if I have it in my hand, I'm just tempted to. Once I see it go under and I think it's a legitimate bite, then I want to pick it up and pull it. Now we've got these really cheap hooks. The hook's just going to come out of the fish's mouth a lot. There's no way around that. But being patient is so important with this. Early on. You have a lot of things working against you. Cheap hooks. The lack of skills because you don't have any levels yet. We'll go around the lake and try some different spots, but for now, I just want to try to see if we can catch a couple fish while I'm thinking about this, uh, this float rod strategy. It's such a different path than I normally take, but I think I like it. I just want to be able to get rid of this bamboo stick and never see it again, you know? I'm already ready to just go put it on the campfire and light it. First real fish of the uh, of the new account is somewhere swinging behind me. Hello. Okay. I guess we can. Uh, it's going to come right out of the fish's mouth. Yep, I knew it. All right, that was a perch. So we probably don't want to keep fishing in this spot. I was hoping with worms we might see some... Is that just sitting on the bottom? I think it was. I was hoping with worms we might see some, um, like some white bream or something right here. But I just don't know if that's going to happen. Let's see what this is. There are a lot of perch here. There's a sleeper. Okay, so that's our first marker fish that we've caught. If there's a marker, that means it's a substantial enough weight to be worth a little bit of money at the fish market. So that is a good sign. We'll keep going over here to this left side a little bit, see if maybe there's other sleepers there. I like it. Size 16 hook really is probably about right. 
we could put the 14 on there, but I don't want to lower the bite rate at all right now. We don't really need to get bigger fish. We just need to catch some cafe orders here early on. There's our first common roach. It's our namesake. I'm going to put that up for a minute here. See if this fish still um, still wants to be caught. Yes, it does. Is that a sleeper again? No, nope, that's a perch. Do you think the perch would also bite the maggots? That's something we could try if we get another perch here. Let's try that. We're gonna to switch to maggots. Remember in the tutorial, they had us purchase some maggots. Let's see how they do here. Might be a little bit slower bite rate than the worms, but I'm curious to see what they catch. To me at Mosquito, this is a good first spot to get familiar with. Look at this crucian. I like it. I like it. So, and you notice that was on bread. If with bread, you're going to get the crucians and gibbles a little more often, which is good, especially during daytime here. There's going to be less and less uh, Chinese sleepers biting. White bream might be a little harder to find. So we'll see a lot of roach, crucians, and gibbles. And the bread is a really good bait to go after those crucian and gibbles. This is so fun. And it gets a lot more fun. I mean, if you could like... It does start slow. If you could start at level 3 with a little more silver... <laughs> It would just be better. But, I mean, there's just something about enjoyment of just a fresh start. Or if it's the first time you've played the game, there's so many options, so many directions you could go with different types of fishing. So much gear in the game now. There's plenty of good options on what do you want to purchase. Let's see if we can't get another crucian or something here. Nope. There's a lot of spots I want to show you, but I just, I don't want to go too far from the store before we get rid of this bamboo stick, to be honest with you. So I was trying to make it work here, but let's go try, let's see if this fish is going to bite. Oh, so annoying. Please take this away from me. All right, first let's check the cafe. Let's just get a glance at what's going on here. So we need two more sleepers for that order. That would be eight silver. This mosquito, I mean, crucian order here at Mosquito is, is possible. The roach order is possible. These are all sizes of fish that we would likely be able to catch. We're not going to be able to do the common carp. The white bream order would be really nice, but there's not much time left on those orders. Oh, there's not much time on Mosquito. We're going to miss that one. Okay, so we're going to have some fresh orders. Uh, let's just go try this spot over here. We're about to hit level two. Right now, we only have, what, three silvers worth? And really, we can't use that next rod till level three anyway, so we might as well just suffer through this bamboo rod a little bit. I'm not gonna get another blue telestick. We're gonna go up to the next level telestick. So let me show you the fir very first time, and I've talked about this in, on stream before and probably in other videos on YouTube. The very first time I played this game, I spent a lot of time right here it's not very deep. Let's uh, let's set it at one meter, and I bet that's going to be too deep. I just want to check and see. I'm just curious. Let's put um, let's actually put bread on this one for for a bit. Yeah, let's get a better cast out there. And then we will put worm on this one. One meter seems to work here. Now, this one's hard to get away from the shore, to be honest, but 
Maybe that'll still work. We might need to go to 80 centimeters depth on that one. Yeah, we do. It's hard to get it out there. Out in the middle, one meter works, but close by 80 centimeters would be better. We'll just let it sit there for a minute, though. I want to keep my eye on our main line here. Some exciting things are happening over there. Both, both have possible fish on there, but this is going to be hard to see it because it's sitting on the bottom. All right, let's try to pull it. Yes, we called it. We got it. All right, so this is a roach on worm. We have reached level two. All right, let's get this back to 80 centimeters. Now, I think that the fish that are going to likely get bred here, the crucians, gibbles, that kind of stuff, they also nibble longer. So you might have less of a headache early on fishing with worms and maggots because you will catch the roach and the Chinese sleepers and such more often. But those crucian gibbles are worth a lot of silver. They, uh, I'm sorry, they're worth at this level a decent amount of XP and some silver. There's a lot of cafe orders for them. So it's worth going with bread some. But as you see, I mean, this thing's been bobbing up and down, getting bites for a while now. So you just have to ask yourself, is it, is it worth it? And now we've pulled the fish out of the mouth. But it's getting quick bites. It's just a matter of, can we catch the fish? Nice little crucian. Is that down enough? Probably not. So the problem with holding one of the lines, which that's what I used to do, and it still may be worth doing it, but the problem with holding it is if the other line gets a bite, sometimes by the time you put the this line down and then grab the other one, you've missed the bite. So it's, you know, it's hard to know which to do. Yeah, I hate this line. I know every time that it's going to pull the, the bait out of the fish's mouth, but um, I just hate it. And there's not enough line on there. I mean, the way the bamboo rod works is that you can't just pick it up and, and then watch it. Once you pick it up, you've lifted it. So it's a real pain. The other thing we could do is go ahead and get one feeder first because that will increase the amount of silver we're making potentially, especially at night going for like white bream and stuff off that dock. We could probably afford that second float pretty quick from there. Let's check and see if feeder fishing, kind of what that cost would be. It also may not have the level requirement. I 
I also may sometimes use my camera. I've started doing that more on YouTube um, videos because I've not been able to stream as much. And so it's just something I do when I'm streaming anyway. So don't be scared. Some of these episodes, you may have to see me, but I will try not to get in the way of the exciting fishing. Two, three, only three markers, but it might be worth checking. I wish we had gotten more crucians, but that bread bite is so slow. It's really nice when a fish really commits to taking the bait like that sleeper did to did there. So we need to also notice if we catch a third sleeper, let's sprint up to the cafe to see. Okay, that's surprising. Got a little tinge to come up here. So I'm, I'm not even sure how this spot compares to other spots, to be honest. This is just like down memory lane for me. It's like one of those spots that I tried. And um, back when I first played this game, I found a lot of early success here. Spots do change over time. Although I feel like for the basic stuff here at Mosquito, it's always pretty good no matter where you fish. There we go. This might be the largest fish we've caught. That is, that is a nice fish. It might be a while before we catch a bigger fish than that, 883 grams. I don't even see it, so I'm, I'm assuming the fish is on there. Another little roach. Catching that big that big of a gibble has like guaranteed that we're gonna hit level three very soon. So that kind of puts me back into thinking, should we get that second float? We don't have to wait on level now. We're gonna hit level three on our next decent fish, I think. Oh, I missed that one. Maybe we should um, maybe we should put worm on both. See if we don't have a chance of finishing that Chinese sleeper order. It might still be up in the cafe. I don't know. There's a crucian. Nice little crucian. So level three already. Glad to see that marker roach. So we caught three Chinese sleepers. 
cafe order may be gone now, but it's worth looking. We also can um, make some choices now that we've hit level three. The nice thing about some of these mosquito orders is you actually can get credit for, okay, it is gone. You can actually get credit for fish that um, are not markers. Like two of these roach for this roach order are not markers. And we, so we, and we basically wouldn't make silver on them anyway, but you can get it with the markers. So I'm thinking, how many more perch do we need? Three more perch? Well, you know what? Let's just go look here. Let's look at our... One thing I definitely want to do is have a distinctly different float on the other rod. And... This one comes with the exact same one. And this costs 45. How much is the rod by itself? 40, well, it depends on which one it is. Let's see which one it is. Comma Comfort Telescope, Telescopic 5. So it's this one. So it costs 44.80. So basically everything else you're getting for free. And what's the difference moving forward? It's the length. How big is the one we have? 4.8. So getting one that's about five would be about perfect. So it really is a good deal. What about the floats? Regular floats. I'd like to use, so how much does this weigh? Four grams, so we know four grams works. How about, we obviously don't want to spend a silly amount. These are a little light. We could try one of those. I guess we'd have to, because you have to be level four to use these. All right, let's just do it. So we need to get enough coins to have a second one. I mean, get enough to 45 silver. So let's just sell our gibbles, our gibble, and we'll sell our marker sleepers. That's five silver right there. Yeah. So now we can easily do this. We have four silver left. All right, let's set this up and see. All right, so that's gonna be our number one. That's gonna be our number two. And let's first of all do the most important thing we can do here which is to discard that. Bamboo is gone. We also need to discard this. Rusty hook is gone. We also need to discard this. Feather float is gone. May we not ever have to use them again on this account. Okay, so this is set up with a 14. We don't really want to use this, but I wanted to see the test. One to 50 grams, so we really should be fine with the lighter float. Let's test that theory. Do you all have a preference? On color. Mostly it's gonna be that top that we see sticking out of the water. I'm just thinking, I'm wondering if at night 
if we do see a little bit of the purple, if that will stand out a little more. This one does have that other color right here. Um, I do think I'm going to go with that one. I like it having the two different colors there on the top. Okay. So let's set up that one on there. We'll just see how it works. Um, the other thing I wanted to think about is bait. Is there any kind of bait? So the cheap red worms are not available here. We can double check winding, but it may be that we have to save up for a big pack of red worms. If we do, we do. We don't need, uh, and look at this, only the night crawlers. <laughs> that's funny. Blood worms, we can get those for buck 80. That's a, that's a possibility. Casters are sold out. Casters would be nice. Um, don't really want to use corn. Sometimes cheese early on is okay for tench. Especially here, it's not like we're going to get, we might get a small common. We don't have enough silver right now anyway. So those are kind of the baits we're thinking about. Corn would be interesting, but we want to make sure we're wanting to get common carp before we start using corn. So let's get some blood worms because they could work good. All right. It is getting towards evening. I'm excited about this big boy. Um, okay, let's try worms. And let's go depth. So we know 1.25 is working. Let's do Let's assume the bottom is 1.5. Actually, let's test. Let's take. Let's test that. Excuse me. This should cast a little farther than the other one. It does. So, yeah, it's a little sideways, isn't it? So, um, why don't we try 1.45? And now, if a, a bite comes, we'll know which, which, which fishing pole it is based on the float. It's getting a nibble, but I can't tell if it's getting any more than that. It does look like that other one is basically sitting up and down. All right, I think there's a fish on our... Our new line here. Nice. Oh, I like it. I like that crucian. Okay. So let's set it to 1.45 and see how that looks. We're getting a little bit of drift with the wind, it looks like. But that should settle down and pretty much be up and down. It's close. I'd say we might need to go to 1.4 or 1, yeah, 1.40 might be better. We want it to be right, right close to the bottom, but we want to clearly see when the bite is happening. So now we've got two solid lot telescope float lines here. And I guess what I'm wondering is, normally in this spot you can catch white bream at night, often on regular worms but that is with bottom or feeder fishing. So I'm wondering if we can replicate that on our float rods and I just don't know, but I want to find out. Yeah, I just don't. I don't like that they're not sitting on the bottom. All right, 140. And let's put this one a little more over here. All right, it's definitely got something on there. Again, 140. All right, we'll see if that one seems to really be sitting up and down in a more direct. Once the bait sinks all the way down. 
I don't know. Should we back it up just a little bit more? Or is that good? Yeah. That was a nice bite. Fish took off, didn't it? It's a marker perch. Just as a reminder, we have a small 14 hook on there. And we have a 16 on this one. Yeah, I think we need to back off the depth a little bit more. The reason why that one disappeared is because the fish took off to the side so much. I like this float rod. It's driving me crazy. So let's try 1.35. There we go. I think that's going to be sitting more straight down. I can't tell what's going on with this one, so we're going to pull it. Is that a sleeper? Yeah. All right, let's see how this looks. So both are set at 1.35 depth. We'll need to turn our light on in just a minute here. Yeah, that looks healthier, I think. This one seems to be moving with purpose. So I'm wondering if there's a fish on there. All right. We may come back here once it's the middle of the night and see if we see any white bream, but I think I want to go check camp for rough. It would be nice to see what this is, though. Could have put the other one back in the water. I don't know. I didn't think it was going to take this long to actually bite. Oh, the patience it requires to float fish in this game, early on especially. To me, the best way to approach float fishing is when there's a really good spot, just float fish with one rod and then have your feeders in doing something else. Actually, that might be enough to pull it. It looks like it's 
Side to side movement often means good things. It is hard to tell sometimes though. We are solidly into night now, so I guess we'll go ahead and check now to see if we can get any white green. And then we'll go look at the rough. Rough will bite all night long. The rough is a good fish to go for at night, especially early on. There's often really lucrative cafe orders on rough. They're, it's almost like the silver you get for them treats them like they're more rare than they are. But especially once you're using feeder fishing, it's quite easy to get rough at a pretty reasonable rate. Not having um, access to red worm will make things a little trickier, but not impossible. All right, just, uh, next time we get a bite on one of them, either one, I'm going to pull it and then we'll pull the other one and go try the rough spot. A lot of float fishing is just getting down the timing and then also remembering to try different depths. You can be fishing in one spot, but if you are using the completely wrong depth, the type of fish you'll catch or, or you know, the quality of the fish you'll catch could be completely different. And that's another reason why it's important to have the map. You at least have a general idea of the depth of where you're fishing based on what the map says. It's not always accurate, but it's often close. This is unbelievable. Oh, to be level three again. Now I just want to see what it is, you know, like. All right, it's about to flip over and then we're going to pull it. Oh, come on. you very much all right let's see what this is it's just a big crucian very nice that was worth the wait but that was a heck of a wait all right let's go see if the rough are biting well let's double check the cafe so we could do this how much time's remaining not long all right so this is a good example Let's see how much these crucians are worth. 5.58 silver. And we're getting, what, nine something? But you can also do these from 30 grams. So we could actually, could have gotten credit for like really tiny crucians. But we just don't have them and the order's about to be up. So we might as well take it. We just need one more roach for that. One, two more perch if we get them. I'm not worried about the perch. The unfortunate part is there are no rough orders right now. And normally that is... Um, often the case that there are one if not two or three rough orders I feel like it's often that I see two all right so this is the camp it's where later you can do a lot of crafting and stuff not something you need to necessarily worry about right now let's head over here let's try a depth of one meters and see what that looks like let's keep worm on there to start off with I don't know, however far we can get it is how far we'll have to do it. Again, normally I would be doing this with feeders, but I'm hoping the rough will bite the float just as well. We don't think that's gonna be much deeper than, let's try one and a half, see if it sits at one and a half, just out of curiosity's sake. Yeah, that's sitting quite nicely, isn't it? 
Okay, so one and a half is safe here. Might be able to go lower. If we don't get bites on worms, we'll try maggots. We'll try those blood worms. This is also when it's even reasonable to put on smaller hooks. Rough have tiny little mouths. I'd say normally I'd use an 18. Do we have a smaller hook that we could throw on one of these? No, 14 is the smallest. 14. And then this one's a 16. Let's see if we get anything though. might not work until um, until we have feeders before I change the bait though let's change the depth if one and a half works let's just make sure it's not like two meters deep here all right it's touching the bottom okay let's try 175. Seven five. That's quite a little ledge, but we're not even getting nibbles yet. We need to try different baits. We don't have the silver for smaller hooks. Maybe this isn't the best thing to do at night when you're this level. Before we give up though, let's um, let's try those blood worms we just got. And then also I'll rotate maggots on the other one if we don't get a bite on the other one here pretty soon. All right, is 175 gonna work on this one too? Yeah. All right, so blood worms are on that one now. Oh, we're getting a bite on worms. Is it a rough? Yes. Okay, we did catch a rough. Um, well, just for science, let's, let's throw maggot out there, see if... Sorry, we have a fish on. All right, so that was on maggots. Thought bloodworms was getting a nibble there. So maggots got one nibble and I missed the bite. Let's see if we can get a second. All right, I don't want to miss testing another spot before the overnight hours are done. We don't have much time. So let's give it another another just few seconds here and then we're going to go try something else just to give you an idea of some things to do in the overnight hours on this first episode. 
places to try. But this is a really good rough spot. They respond well to both worm and red worm typically. All right, so this is on blood worm. Dang it. When you have to wait that long for a fish and then you pull the, fish, the hook right out of the fish's mouth, you've got these cheap hooks and just because of float fishing, it is a rough life. But I'm telling you, that's why it is, um, it is, uh, <laughs> that's funny. It is, what was I saying? Oh, that's why so many of us say it just, it starts slow. You kind of have to stick with it. It does get better, but it can be hard at first. All right, this is where we want to try. We want to go to bread and the depth needs to, let's try one meter, see if that works. We just simply want to try bread and worm here and just cast right in front of us. Um, that's two, that's not, okay, so let's try um, 0.8 meters. So 80 centimeters, that might work better. Looks like it does, yeah. This is another spot I like a lot. A lot of trophy gibble and crucians have been caught here on many different things, boilies, but also things like night crawlers and such. Occasionally bread and other stuff will work too though. Both are getting bites. It's still pre 4 a.m., so still like overnight hours technically. Hopefully we can see what these two fish are. Come on, give me a clear sign. Could have possibly done both of them, but I wasn't sure. There we go, this one for sure. Nice. Yeah, that's what we're looking for spot with nice big gibbles yeah that's gonna level us up really quickly and it'll be nice silver too all right and that was on worms and i feel pretty confident that some that that was probably what we were catching on the bread as well go ah it came back out Let's see if we can get this one back in the water before that other one goes under oh shoot this is where you can mess yourself up a little bit ah, we still got it it's nice because sometimes they well, they will just like really get all the way on and you have a much bigger window of time to to, to grab them like that time so I think with the perch, if that order is still up, we just need one more. So maybe we'll get it here. That was a really nice bite there. Okay, an eyed. That's interesting. Catching a little bit of everything here in this spot, aren't we? And this is a spot you can fish all day and night. One reason why I like this spot is because at night the crucians and gibbles are still really active. Let 
where they tend to be. I believe we're already level four. And you can always go back to the pond at low level and just catch some of the fish in there. The thing you have to remember though is that there's no cafe at the pond and you can only sell fish to the cafe if you caught the fish at the water body where the cafe is located. What is that, the worms? Is that what's on this one? It seems to be getting faster bites than the bread. <laughs> and it's gone. It's another perch, I like it. No nibble at all, right? All right. So I should have mentioned this earlier, but I am, it teaches this in the tutorial, but I'm hitting Z, sorry, to zoom in, which when you're float fishing, that can be really helpful to uh, get a good look at the float, especially as you get up to Bolo, Bolinese fishing or even match rods when you're casting much farther away from shore with your floats. Which that's where, honestly, float fishing gets a lot more fun to me. I'm doing match rod fishing now on my main account and, and love it. It's great. Um, and you can do some good fishing with bolo rods as well, but they're a little more awkward than uh, match rods. Bolo rods are really best used on rivers where there's a current. It, has a, it allows the line to sort of feed itself out as it's going down the river, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool mechanic. All right, so this perch order is still here, and we can do all five of them. So if you hold control down, you can select more than one fish. But if you hold shift down, you can select a whole row. First one, and then hold shift down and select the last one. So that's 10 silver for those little perch. That is great. We need one more common roach. We really need to try to do that, don't we? This eyed order for 92 silver. There's no way we're doing that on our gear, I don't think. So we won't even go for it. Now, if we had gotten one eyed that was one kilo, that would be possible. And we need one more gibble. So we basically just need to fit fish in a um, active little spot and try to catch some Crucian common gibbles. Uh, let's see. What, what order? Is it the roach order that we're so close to finishing? Let's just try this really quick, y'all. Sorry, this, this video, this first video. I mean, I, this is always my struggle on these leveling together videos is I don't want to stop playing and I don't want to stop the first video, but I really need to. So I guess we'll do worms. Let's just... Um, Just put them in here and see if there's, sometimes this little spot near this log can be okay. Do we have worms on both? Worm, worm. When did I switch it off bread? I thought we had bread on one. I'm sort of confused. Is there a fish on the line? Yeah, there is. It wasn't committed though. All right, that one's on. That's a sleeper. Um, 
last time I did a leveling together series, the sleepers were really good in this spot too. It's a good little spot for Chinese sleepers, I think. So remember, once every in-game day, so that's a real-life hour, you can you get the free food here at Mosquito at the little grill by the store. By the, Oh, yeah, that's a perch. Um, and you can also, once a day, get free gear from the cottage house, which the important part of that gear is getting the... Is that a perch as well? Yep. The important part of that is getting the, um, the worms. Get 30 free worms once a day. Because until you purchase a shovel and start digging worms yourself, you will need those worms. I'm not sure this is a great roach spot that we've chosen here. Probably on down beyond camp would have been better in the little marshy area. Nice crucian. We're already past level four and a half now, aren't we? I will say that this spot seems to be really good quick bites. So this is a good spot to fish at just to get random fish. Since I said it, let me go show you what I was talking about. We'll put maggots on one line as well. And I think this area here is often good for roach, but let's test it anywhere in here. But I'm going to try right here for now. I'm going to keep it at the same depth, see if it's deep enough for that. Uh, yeah, it appears to be. Sometimes the roach especially like maggots, and there's several baits that tend to work really go good for roach. Let's see what's biting here. We're not going to stay long because we are going to wrap this one up, but There we go. Oh, it came out. That was old maggots, though. Don't you want to know what's biting maggots here? I certainly do. We might even be able to go to one meter there. I don't know. Maybe not. I feel like it's pretty shallow in this area, typically, but... Whatever it is, is driving me crazy in this spot. It is doing all of these fake bites. We may have to wait till next time to find out what's here.
that a sleeper? Yeah, okay. Come on. Yes. Let's see what ball what's on maggots? Looks like a gibble. It is. Interesting. Can we get something to bite bloodworms here? That spot that I showed you that's back over there. It would not be a bad strategy just to fish that day and night if it's hot like it was. It's a little sleeper. So you'll notice on a lot of these catches, almost every one, we're getting points towards float fishing. Almost one thing I haven't talked about yet is putting skill points in, but We'll save that for the next episode, but we are getting skill points every time we hit a level. And our float fishing is now up to 6.9. And as you level that up, it unlocks new abilities. So the more proficient you get at float fishing, the more different types of float fishing you can do. Same with spin fishing and feeder fishing and all that. Okay. Man, that fish has stayed on forever. Of course, then it pulls out of its mouth. So we caught Chinese sleepers mostly there. I was kind of expecting roaches. Maybe I need to go back to bread. I don't know. Roaches are normally so common until you're trying to catch one. All right. Well, I've shown you a lot of good spots here in this first episode, and these are all spots that I would like to, that I would I like to use when, especially trying to figure out float fishing here at the early level. We'll double check the cafe. We got a gibble order for three point six nine silver. We never quite got the common roach. And that's it. But we did make 5.9 more silver. So we're up to 30 silver. And remember for that starter feeder rod, which is really what we're saving for pretty aggressively now, we need 149 silver. What does that come with, by the way? Oh yeah, you know, we can get, we can get, um, we can get feeder fishing a lot sooner than that. We basically just need about 50 silver to get speeder fishing, uh, feeder fishing. We can, we can take a baby step. We don't have to wait for that. That's too long to wait. All right, let's go ahead and get our food. All right. Thanks for watching. If this has been helpful, please let me know. It's always good as I try to decide like how far I want to go on these series. Um, if I do keep going, my idea is to try to focus on different things as we can, as we get high enough level to use different types of gear and all that to really try to focus in on that. But uh, early on here, it's really going to just be building the engine so we can make some silver with feeder, feeder rods and float rods and all that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.